welcome back to For the Minions, the show where we talk about the various Paragon-like MOBAs that are currently in production. We talk about all the news and updates for them. This week, we've got our, we're going to be talking about Overprime. We're going to correct some things we had assumed about their map. And uh, we're going to be talking about their updated Trello, which has a lot of really good information on it. And um, then for Ethereal, we really got nothing to fault. We're going to be talking about their... Um, their new patch, the official movie announced that the, the movie that Fault's going to be in, and then uh, Predecessor, they did a Decker skill work and rework, and they're supposed to do uh, an announcement this week. We were recording before that announcement, so if it's anything really big, I'll do its own separate video for it. Otherwise, it'll just carry over into the next week, but I'm your host, The Mangoose. Joining me, uh, well, it seems to be as always now, is The <laughs> Viking Jedi. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing really good. I didn't know if I should do like a, you know, the, the jelly knees shimmy thing that he does <laughs> or like interrupt you on your intro. But I, I, I don't know if I could really, you know, pull off the, the jelly knees vibe the same way. So I, I just let you do your thing this time. But no, I'm doing good, man. Uh, I've been having fun, uh, you know, playing other games and, you know, still edging myself about these games. So I can't wait yeah. for uh, for more news to come out. That's uh, especially for the ones that aren't already out. Um, but the fault stuff is, is pretty interesting. So I'm excited to go into that as well. And then also joining us this time is Sarah Jog. You may know him from the Overprime community. He's been with Overprime for a very, very long time. He streams it, but he also plays all these other games. And it's always interesting to get that point of view. So Sarah Jog, welcome. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us your favorite Paragon hero. Um, <laughs> tell us all about your, just tell us everything about you, man. Uh, yeah. Welcome everyone. Um, I'm from Switzerland. I just stream on the side for fun. Um, I played Paragon back when I was studying software engineering. And when it got shut down, I didn't really have anything to play, so I'm very happy that now remakes are coming out that I can play. Um, I personally was a crunch main when the game ended, nice. so I'm happy to play crunch, which is one of the reasons I can enjoy fall, kind of, because they have crunch. I can play crunch again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's about it, unless there's anything else you want to know. Oh, no, we'll get into talking about that when we talk about Overprime, which is actually going to be our first topic for discussion tonight, is we're going to get right into Overprime here. So uh, let's correct what we were... So they had released some information, uh, some pictures of that looked like an Agora map, and we were speculating, a lot of speculation over whether, you know, if there would be multiple maps or anything like that. But no, it's not. What it is, is they simply want to take some of the Agora assets... Um, the monolith assets and place them on the legacy map, which I think a lot of people um, seem to think that the monolith assets look better, but the layout for the legacy map is better. And I tend to agree with a lot of that, even though I kind of quite nostalgic for even the legacy appearance myself. Um, Jedi, what do you think of that? I mean, yeah, when when uh, we got the correction, uh, it was uh, it, it really kind of put our guesses uh, to the side. Um, so, I, yeah, we don't have to worry about them uh, potentially running multiple maps or anything like that or the multiple queues and all the shenanigans we were thinking that they could possibly be doing. Right. Um, no. So I, I'm, I'm a fan personally. Uh, I, one, just because I think it will continue to, you know, uh, set them slightly apart from, you know, the, the old days to an extent, you know, to doing their own thing, even though they're they're still using the same assets. They're kind of using them in their own unique way, which I think uh, is valuable for any of these uh, companies to succeed is to not completely remove the Paragon, you know, uh, fan base, but don't just focus on trying to appease to them because obviously Paragon didn't succeed. You know, we don't want to repeat the same mistakes, so we got to capture new players, right? And so I think, uh, you know, updating the map, making it feel more over prime is fine. Um, I'm very much curious to see what that eventually looks like. They haven't released too much for us to be able to to poke and prod at, but uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I'm over, overall excited for the, the growth of Overprime in general. Um, it's Of the ones, it's probably my favorite that I'm rooting for. Um, I try not to be too biased, but I'm leaning pretty heavily to Overprime for sure. And, uh, uh, Serge, have you, um, I'll, I probably shouldn't even ask if you've gotten to play on the map or not, but, <laughs> uh, you've, you've been with the Overprime community for a while, and I know you probably remember when they did have multiple maps and all of that, um, what do you think of this combination of the monolith assets with the legacy, um, layout? 
Personally, I prefer the legacy layout to the monolith layout. And for the assets, I have to see the new map in like gameplay. Because mm-hmm. the trees and everything from the legacy map look like you're in nature, kind of. Mm-hmm. And the monolith map has more this bright, uh, I don't know, alien kind of thingy, future structures. Yeah, these so, weird obelisks and like glowing blue orbs on white stalks and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was a little more all futuristic instead of fantasy. Futuristic kind of isn't bad in that sense. It's just I need to see when I play it what I actually prefer more. If I would prefer more the legacy assets to or the monolith assets on the map, but I definitely prefer that they take the legacy layout of instead of monolith. Also, you mentioned multiple maps. And I don't know how much you played during the demo version, but they had a map called Altar of Power, which was a single lane map. Yes. So I'm going to assume that at some point they're going to bring that map in some way or another back, because it would be weird that they create a map and then are not using that at all. I'd be a fan for that, to be honest. I, I'm a big Aram player on League of Legends, so uh, having like a single lane, just full on team fighting only, you know, shenanigans map would be super fun. I, I'd be all about that. So uh, yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, the cool thing about Altar of Power, it wasn't like they just pared down a lane from one of the other maps. They created like a brand new, specifically intentioned to be a a one lane map and it was like had like a little buff on the side where you get health back but you need to stand in it for a while so you couldn't just immediately grab it um i thought that was a really cool design for their for their aram map yeah i missed that i hope they do bring that back sooner rather than later i do believe they will bring that back eventually i mean one thing and and i'm sure sarah can point out more to it but like they do listen to feedback really well um and so if we're all saying hey we want to play that you know i'm sure they will figure out a way to add it in um and and i think the same thing for the assets too i think if the overwhelming you know community believes that the the assets don't look as good as they did before i i think that they wouldn't have a problem reverting or coming up with a new plan or changing it um you know i don't know how that would impact like you know us going into early access or anything like that but um it does seem like they're very proactive and wanting to appease to the community and making sure i mean within reason of course right they're still trying to design their own game but appease to the community and, and design it in the way that people want to play it and and feel immersed in their their world so um i'm at least positive and, and objectively so in that regard so i hope it works out well but yeah i can't wait to see it i mean yeah they definitely try to listen to feedback of course it's always hard to please everyone <laughs> sure well it, it starts with what do you prefer legacy or monolith right new legacy with only two towers on each lane or the old legacy with three towers the two hour matches or the 20 minute matches yeah <laughs> <laughs> what do they want? What does the community want? But they definitely try to get feedback on what they do and adjust accordingly. Accordingly, Yeah, I, I, that's one of my favorite things so far um, about it. Um, also, I spent a lot of time in the, the Discord today. It was a, a lot of fun, a lot of back and forth on people who, who watch this show. Um, and it was really cool, like, you know, seeing and hearing all the different like you know opinions and how people are feeling and um I, I, again I, I the hype for this game for me is just super super high i i want it to succeed really really well like i i, I badly I, I want this game to work because uh i want i want any of the third mobas third person mobas to work but um that's not named smite i just don't really dig smite that much but <laughs> man i i just felt like out of the ones that i've played this one overrun just felt fun like it was just aggressive in the right ways um i do want to see a little bit more like you know um i i call it like chess match maybe like a speed chess would be more apt to overprime but uh you know some of those types of things so i can't wait to see uh as they continue to progress with the um the trello and stuff like that and figuring out what their their next steps are going to look like um but yeah i i'm i'm so hyped on this game uh well, let's uh let's move on now to their Trello. Mm-hmm. So the Trello, if you guys don't know what Trello is, it's like a uh, workflow management system. And um, as as we've been saying, like they they let's do a lot of community feedback, and you can see that firsthand 
in their Trello. You can see that they they are trying to work with the community. I think it's probably a little more important that they have a singular vision that they work work towards um, while using a bit of community feedback. But like, you, you definitely don't want to try and listen to implement everything everybody in the community says because you're just going to have a hot fucking mess on your hands. And they Unless it's me. The, yeah. Listen to everything I say <laughs> yeah. and implement all the things I want. And everything will be fine, I promise. Yeah, no problems at all. Soli definitely has a direction that they want to go in, and they've solidly taken steps towards that direction, and I like to see it. Um, when you're looking at this Trello, you got, like, stuff that they're looking at. You've got stuff that's in development. I think the the one that's most important to me is fixed in next update. This is stuff that they've taken mm -hmm. a look at. They've already fixed. It's just going to go live the next time they update the game. Maybe mm -hmm. not live. Like we'll probably get an even more improved version the next time we get to play the game. But like uh, some of the things that they've um, listed were chat system improvements. I didn't really have a problem with their chat. Did you, did you guys have any problems with their chat last test? I rarely used it. So no, maybe the only thing that was slightly weird was like, you know, when you were in the uh, main lobby uh, and you would have like the world chat that was kind of all over the place and people were, of course, using it to, to do, do and say mean things to each other. But yeah. Uh, yeah, outside of that, no, not really. I didn't notice it too much in game, although I think you used it fairly frequently in game. Um, but there was no like chatting to the enemy team. Uh, so it was only team based, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, that's what I remember as well. You could only chat with your team in game, right? And normally, I use ping. I don't usually chat when I play, since I don't really have the time to chat anyway. I kind of need to move around, and so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't really spend five minutes chatting to people. <laughs> exactly. Especially not in over prime. It's way too fast to yeah, spend a lot fast. of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you have no time that you're just sitting there in a minion wave like waiting for a minion's health to get low enough to to last hit it's just constant <laughs> it's constant and over prime yeah um another thing that they fixed and is uh is a tower inhibitor core aggro indicator improvements um towers inhibitors i didn't have a problem with core yeah i don't had no idea what the aggro radius of the of their of the core was so that'll be a nice thing to implement um, what do you think, Sarah Jean? What do you think that they'll put? They'll, you think they'll put like a ring, like they do with towers around the core, or how do you think they'll handle that? Oh, well, I'm not sure on how to interpret that thing from the trail, actually, because it could also mean it shows who it aggro's instead of the range of the aggro. Because when I attack the tower, you have that red line, if I remember correctly, that showed mm -hmm. that it was targeting you, but the core just like sh was shooting at you and mm -hmm. like that ball flew through <laughs> all enemies <laughs> and then it hit you and you were like okay i'm dead why because <laughs> you don't even realize that the core is aggroing you so it could also be that they add some indicator that you are taking aggro of the tower core yeah I didn't yeah think of that. Uh that would that would have been i mean if i was making a suggestion that's what i would want and i hope that's what they're meaning by this is exa exactly that there's too many times when we would be trying to end the game and then somebody's being targeted like why am i taking so much damage oh i guess i'm being <laughs> one shot by the core yeah. okay cool like yeah um so yeah getting any visual improvements i think regardless of why you're do or in which area is always good right giving the player more information of how the characters interacting with the world um but yeah the core one was funny like you would i mean it was funny while being annoying right and something that needed to be addressed so it's it, hopefully that's part of what they're addressing here I, I wouldn't mind some kind of outline indicator either if that's in the you know the fix that's fine. I, I don't really care about that too much, but letting us know who's getting hit and and, uh, and and the clarity for that would be really nice. And I think the lane towers also had some issues where um, you would see the line, but it wasn't always consistent of like how it would swap over um, and like, you know, when it would swap over because, you know, it was sometimes delayed if like a champion hit you that it would go to the champion and, and all that stuff. So it, I think they have some work on on that clarity and design as well but it wasn't nearly as as obvious as the as the core just one shotting or two shotting you <laughs> unbeknownst to yourself yeah yeah um the next thing they have on here is hero face revamp this is something we've seen with uh especially Guang and uh shinbi or um i guess han and bora that's her new name 
is they yes. compl- like she looks completely different from Shinbi. Um, I like these steps that they're taking to separate themselves further and further away from Paragon. And I don't know if these here the the face revamps are going to apply to all of their heroes, but there's already like um Scott looks a little looks a little bit different from Steel, um, and as we said, Bora looks very different from Shinbi. Han looks very different from Kwang, and I don't know. I like that they're doing this. Um, I don't think this is anything the community called for though. This is just something I think that they prioritize themselves. Which again, like I said. They they have their own direction that they want to go in, and I think that's a little more important than listening to community feedback. But um, I don't know. You guys have any thoughts on the hero face revamps? I mean, no, not really. I mean, I, of course, again, it, it's exciting to to see or you know expect any new improvements to the old assets um, or completely changing them altogether. Uh, I. I and that's one thing I think we've, you know, said a lot about Overprime is that the game and the, the um, character design looks really, really good. The skins look really, really good. So um, any continued focus on that is just, for me, you're, you're cooking with oil. It's great. It, like, you're, you're, I'm stoked for that. Just making the game more visually appealing, making the champions feel like if they're 2022 champions or 2023 champions rather than feeling like the the old old assets um so yeah I, I i'm it's good to see it on there like you know i'm not like overly enthused about it but i it's definitely nice to see that it's something they're still continuing to focus on for the, for themselves internally i mean i like that they generally improve the assets but the face for me personally is not that important since i usually don't see the face <laughs> of the characters while playing like i see the back yeah I, uh, the only time I can see the face is when I'm in the shop buying skins, and sure. then it's it's not the uh, the point of attention for me because I'm more like, oh, this skin looks great, and not this face of the skin looks great. I think so. If, if you see Severog's face, you're in trouble. If you see <laughs> Twin Blast's face, he's in trouble. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. We do need to uh, focus more on the assets you know from our view you know what i mean make sure that those are (laughs) you oh me (laughs) um loading page improvements i don't even know what that means um uh kind of the meat and potatoes here item balance improvements again i didn't think the items were all that unbalanced but i would say you're very wrong okay well then you go ahead (laughs) And lay it down for us, Viking Jenna. I so I mean, I, for me, the items they they lacked um, uh, diversity was the biggest thing. But the uh, the clarity I think was also something that was weird. Like some of the the, the descriptions on what exactly they would do and how they interacted um, was not always um, as fleshed out as I'd like them to be. So I'm hoping some of that is what they're referencing in the trailer that that's the stuff that they're they're going to be addressing is making them you know work in a more defined way um and it's easier as the player to be able to make decisions based off of the content of the game um because i'm always a fan of like in game changing your items based off of the enemy's composition not just having like a this is the build you go with because it's the most optimal damage build or whatever and just going with it because you turn your brain off and just face roll on the keyboard. I, I don't like that. I want to be able to feel like I have, you know, onus and, and impact based off of, you know, what I think is going to help the team the best. Um, and I think the items, while some of them did do that, others were really lacking. And almost, again, you put you into a position where it's like, well, if I'm going to spend 3000 this item is just by far better than using this maybe niche item. Um, so I think the balance on that can do some adjusting. Also, the cost in comparison to the amount of money you can earn um, also I think needs to be looked at or vice versa, the economy and the game in general. Um, but that's just a, a quick feeling that I had, um, especially since I played mostly carry and uh, the carry role for me felt like you really, really needed to have your items di- you know, dialed in because, you know, again, the cost effectiveness and all that stuff, especially when you're ending games in, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how fast you get that first prime. Yeah. Um so yeah, that that's how I felt at least about the the items. So it's cool to see they're addressing maybe some of those. I mean, again, it's not super in depth and detailed on what they're doing on them. They're just doing something with them. So we'll see. Sir John, yeah, what I mean, are your thoughts? The items that were there felt not that bad balanced, but it's definitely a lack of item. Yes, a lack of diversity in general on the items. So. Uh, 
I, as already mentioned, I don't know what's all included in item balance improvement. If it's just reworking the existing ones or adding new ones. Mm -hmm. Personally, I felt like there were not many support or active items in general. Like uh, there were like six actives or something mm -hmm. and the starting Running. gems. Mm -hmm. And that was about it. And that was like, okay, as a support, I take those six items since those are the only support items. Yeah, so I actually. really hope they will add more items, but it was a beta. So yeah, I can't really complain about not having enough items at that point. It was not their main focus, I guess. I mean, we can complain. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. That's it. Would be the <laughs> yeah. Purpose of this. I'm joking. <laughs> no, of course you're absolutely right. I mean, if we're um, the the CBT, it was it, it was fine, right? The the items did what they were supposed to do, and and uh, overall, you were able to function just fine. But um, I mean, for me, when I think about like you know going into early access and and all that, I would like to see those things more fleshed out that the competitive aspects of you know again not playing um maybe full-on chess but not playing checkers like a speed version of chess where you're still getting people out on the map and being active but your items need to feel good um whether it's adding more actives or adding better um passives if they want to keep things a little bit more casual friendly i know when you start adding in a bunch more buttons for people to press they go oh my my, my brain uh, i'm speaking about myself so i like passive items because i don't have to think about them but i know support means especially you guys love having your uh your actives you know so you can keep a, a, us brain dead idiots alive for as long <laughs> as possible so we can put out damage um but, but yeah so at least going into early access again it's another thing that's cool that from the feedback that we gave in our videos and i'm sure the community as a whole was giving it's cool to see that they're again talking about it and addressing it and um, can't wait to get more details than what they currently are listing but um you know it's exciting to see what about you mangoose how did you feel about it um, like I said, I didn't think the items were all that bad. They just needed, just needed more, just like what Sarah John said, we just needed more items. Yeah. I, I think something really important to point out real quick, too. As we're mm -hmm. looking at this Trello, they have different color-coded bars that indicate what, who's working on what, which I don't know what the, the bars, who they belong to, but it's, I think it's important to note that because, like, they're working with hero, the hero face revamp, not important to a lot of people, but that's not like it's taking away from the item development like there's a separate sure. team for that and then there's a separate team working on the hero face revamps and shit like that so it's not you know they're not they're not choosing between whether they're going to add more items or improve the faces you know what i mean um and this let's move on to the next one hero death effect improvements and um I think this is fairly important because it is sometimes you'll kill somebody. Well, you'll hit somebody you think they're dead and they're not. And it would be nice if there was a more clear indication that you had just killed somebody, you know, aside from the feed that comes up and everything. But a lot of times, especially in Overprime, you could be overwhelmed with the onslaught of information and particle effects going on mm -hmm. on your screen. So I think uh, improved um, death effects would be uh, would be nice. I think uh, I think this is a bit bigger than people might think it might it might think it is. Uh, what do you think, Sarah Jong? Yeah, I mean, I remember that I had to turn down the effects to like medium or low for my stream to not go to like twenty <laughs> FPS in team fights. <laughs> <laughs> when I was not streaming, it was fine, but I think I had to put it on medium. I could have the rest on like high or epic or whatever wasn't much a problem, but the effects really were taking a toll on my graphics card. So yeah, there's a lot of effects and therefore also you need like to know when you kill someone and they know that sometimes people just went through the portal or whatever and I was like, did I kill them? And <laughs> oh, no, they are on the other side of the map. So yeah, I think that's actually good that they improved that. You just pop it to a bush or something too is another one. <laughs> Yeah, that was a big one. And of course, yeah, I agree 100%. I, I do uh, echo that it's a, I think, a really important thing. Um, I don't know if it needs to be like, you know, uh, an 80s dramatic, you know, killing move. Where, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be all of that. Although that could be cool depending no, I on want how they do it. The entire game to stop, go slow-mo. We focus in. 
you get like a like a, a the whatever skill shot you use kind of slowly coming in and it like hits your face. Yeah, no, uh, it, it, we don't need to go <laughs> obviously all that. We can save that for the fault movie or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think having something to you know signify the 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 clarity right is always a good thing. I and mean, we talked about it before, like just. You know, anything gives players more information, but in a clean way that doesn't distract or take away from the rest of the environment. Because um, I don't want to see like a big explosion and now half my screen, I can't see what else is going on. And then there's, you know, a, a, a gank coming in, you know, count is showing up all of a sudden, but I couldn't see it because I had a flashbang going off in my face. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't we don't need all that. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think that the the clarity for for a kill in whatever capacity would be very much welcomed and i think is extremely important uh like you said so uh, if it's not on people's radar that's one that should be and they hopefully people pay attention to it and provide feedback when necessary this last one i have no idea what it means out game <laughs> accessing animation application wait say it again out game accessing animation application uh maybe the end like when when the game's over like that that end screen I didn't really notice it being that much of an issue, but then again, it was fairly bare bones all across. So I don't, maybe they're looking to make it a little bit cooler when the game ends or. I don't even understand. That's my guess. I don't even understand. I'm lost on this one as well. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody from Soul Leave, if they're watching, yeah. <laughs> can, can, can cue us in, let us know what the hell that even means. But, I mean, to be honest, like the Trillo as a whole, it took me a, quite a while to uh, get familiar with how it was all laid out. I sat there and I was like, I mean, I'm not the smartest person. You know, when you're this pretty, you don't have to be smart. But uh, <laughs> when I was looking through that, I was like, wait, what is this? Is this like it took me a minute to realize, like, oh, some of this is stuff they've already done or they've addressed or whatever. And like, you know, and so um, I know in the uh, in the forums, uh, the on the discord, people were wondering the same thing and it's uh, I think people were confused on how to read the Trillo because it's not I don't think it's an application a lot of people outside the industry maybe even use um but yeah it, it's I got the impression and I would love to get your guys's feedback or ideas on it I, I get the impression that they are now that I know how to read it a little bit better they are in the final touch-up phase of stuff it doesn't really feel like maybe other than the map there's any like huge huge like major game breaking changes that they still need to figure out i feel like after this last test i think they feel like they got the game relatively where they want it to be in in the the main aspects of it and it's now just all cleanup phase and, and fine tuning and you know balancing and all that stuff and so um i feel like and we haven't gotten any word from them one way or the other but i feel like they're on track to hit early access like they said they wanted to before the end of the year. Um, what that end of the year really means, I mean, it could be December 31st at midnight, maybe, but I'm hoping that it's more like holiday times um, or if, it, you know, at least maybe we can get into it and do another beta test. But uh, do you guys have any new insights or any other thoughts on the on the Trillo as far as like the layout of it, where they you feel like they are in the, in the dev space at this point? I mean, I can't really say much to it. I just know that they gave us an estimate, which is still this year. Yeah. So they didn't change so far with the inside information. What I can tell is just that it, as far as I know, plan is still this year. That's awesome. And also they didn't announce anything else. So Right. Why would we think something else? <laughs> oh, I think it's more the people in Discord having their... Uh concerns for obvious reasons you know games get pushed back and and all that stuff and so people want yeah, the game yeah. out as soon as possible and so they're if it's not out tomorrow they're gonna think that it's never coming out right <laughs> um but no it's more just again uh, uh bringing that you know to the to the forefront and again reminding people that it does seem like it's on track at least from the outside looking in and again maybe from the inside looking out it's also still on track is that do you know if that's also still the idea and if you can't say obviously i understand ndas are what they are but do you know uh if that's still the plan with um their console release like i know that they were aiming for playstation 5 i believe um is that still supposed to I mean, also happen around the same time or do, do you have any information i don't know honestly when okay. the console is supposed to happen i just know that they still plan to release it on console okay but i really don't know if it's with the PC or if they're going to make two separate releases. Sure. And when you uh, look at the Trillo without your inside knowledge, just, uh, 
you know, looking at it for face value, do you feel like my assessment is is pretty on par that things seem to be more in the cleanup phase that there's not really anything that's like huge that they still have to undertake, you know, and I know that's, you know, a, a, a weird word, huge can mean all kinds of things, but uh, does, does that kind of make sense to the question? I mean, there are a lot of small improvements. Um, if you go on the investigation tab, board, whatever column, I think, mm -hmm. there are a few things that might actually take quite some work still, because, uh, where is it? For example, there is a performance optimization there, I believe, somewhere. Yeah, that's a big one. I mean... That can be anything from make the game a little bit smoother to uh, spend 100 hours to improve the performance. Like, sure. uh, So there are a few things in there, like new map development, new item developments. Uh, it can be small ones, but it can be huge, depending on how much they want to have there for early access. I personally think it will be ready for early access. The question is just how much is in it at that point and is it what we expect or is it more or less okay that actually that's leading me into another question for you it do you think that everything that's listed on the on the trello is stuff that they want to have done prior to early access or regardless of early access and that some of this stuff is fully expected to be worked on during early access i mean I would assume that the in-development things are things they want to have for early access since they are working on them right now. Mm -hmm. And the investigation things are optional things. That's how I would interpret that board. But I don't know what it is exactly. if, Or if it's just the fix in the next update is what's definitely in and the rest is optional since I can't see any deadlines or anything on that board. <laughs> right, right. I'm actually, personally, I'm glad they didn't add deadlines on there. I think that that would have uh, put the community in a, a place to to go after them. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that they are obviously being so transparent. I, I don't even think that it was necessary for them to release the Trello for everybody to be able to see what they're working on. But when they announced it, I mean, for me, I got more buy-in. I was like, you know what, this is so cool. They really want their players to be invested in part of the experience of moving this game forward. So um, I, I'm just grateful for that as, as a whole, because like, you know, obviously when we go into the other games, we a lot of times are just guessing at what they could be working on. Uh, we, you know, even if it's just a screenshot from something, we dissect it like crazy and like, wait, what does that mean? And I don't know, that pixel's a little different than that one. And uh, yeah, I don't know. And it gets just into the weeds. So Trillo is definitely helping us to at least maintain focus and see what they're doing. And um, I, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, it's uh, a it's a workflow management tool, so it'll be there right. in place and used long after the game is it has been released. And and they're not the only ones using Trello. There's other companies that have used Trello. I've become sure. quite familiar with this since <laughs> I started tracking all these games because it seems like they all use Trello. But yeah, um, I mean it's a common thing in software development to use such boards. I don't use Trello for work, but we use something that looks pretty much the same. Just mm -hmm different uh, product software so yeah let's uh, let's move on from the trello and uh normally we would get into the other updates but since we have sarah Rajog here we're gonna or i want to ask him about his experiences with over prime and i know a lot of people are going to call me out being like oh that's favoritism that's favoritism having sarah uh, an over prime moderator just bear in mind i've had sergeant Smokey, the leader of Ameda studios on this show i've had i've had devs and testers from Strange Matter, from Metabuff, from Phoenix Rising, from you know Visionary, like all the way back in the day. This isn't like a new thing. I'm not showing a bunch of <laughs> favoritism towards Overprime. I've definitely had give give everybody the opportunity. I've done interviews with Ace on here. Ruba used to have a fucking entire segment on this show, and he's he he works with Omega now. But uh, but I do want to uh, talk to Serjog about Overprime because. I think the community's opinion of Overprime, and that includes myself. I used to make fun of the Overprime like a motherfucker, but <laughs> the community's opinion of Overprime has shifted exponentially throughout the development process. However, you're one of the ones that has been there and stuck with them since the very beginning. Um, we were talking before we started the show. You even played Overthrow 
which was Rocket Mania's um, solo project, which ended up being combined with uh, Prime X to become Over Prime. Uh, what is it about this project, Sarajog, that has made you stick with them, believe in them, and just stay with them for so long? I mean, if I remember Overthrow, I remember playing a Severog, and you pretty much got, he made your ult so that you couldn't miss. It was, I don't know, like 180 degree angle on your ult, so if you just looked at someone, you would definitely hit them. And from there, it just went a long way and improved. It got so much smoother. And the one thing that Overprime has, which I miss when I play Fault, is the immersion. Like, when I die in Overprime, I get angry or upset or whatever. When I die in Fault, it's like, okay, yeah, my character exploded. Sure. It, I don't know what exactly it is. If it's the animation, the SFX, or the speed in general, that it's faster than the other remakes. It's just that I feel more immersed in the game and enjoy it more. And I remember Fault was the first one that made a beta over uh, Christmas time, like a two-week beta, where I played. And after that, we couldn't play anymore. And then Overprime came out. And when Fault finally came out again and was playable again, it just felt boring to me. I don't know what exactly it was that made it, but that's why I stick with Overprime and I talked with the developers. I played a lot of games with the developers. And I mean, they whooped my ass with a 300 ping on Mordok and I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> What's going on with Sean Snow? He has 300 ping and he hits every shot. Like, how? So that's one of the things maybe the developers play the game, they love to play the game, they love Paragon, and so they want to make what they were missing in Paragon out of Overprime. Instead of just recreating Paragon, they want to make a better version of it, their, their better version. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's going to be the best version or everyone is going to love that version, but it's what they see, they have a vision. And they've certainly from what I have seen, have rewarded your loyalty. Like, the way I learned about how Im how much Overprime had improved after being acquired by Netmarble was your stream. They chose to use your stream to kind of introduce at least the Western community to Overprime. Like, that, like watching your stream is how I got a, a feel for what they had been doing with the game. And I think that was really cool of them to... To, to give you that opportunity, even though you're just kind of a part-time streamer, you're not like a major, they could have gone to some major streamer or something, but no, they chose to reward your loyalty, and I think that's really cool. And not only that, but they have, you and several other of the, um, the Discord moderators, their names are on little plaques in in the map. Like, if you go into mid lane and you're running up the stairs, you can look at Sarah Jog's name right there on a on a commemorative plaque right there in the middle of the map. I just think that speaks volumes about the character of the people, of, of, of the members of Team Soul Leave. Um, your experiences with dealing with them, I mean, you just said that they, they have such a love for the game and for the product that they're making. Um, how community-driven are they? Because they seem to blister listed the community a lot. They seem to include you a lot as a part of the community. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10... Soli's community, like community feelings, I guess. I don't even know how to put it. What do you think? That's it's rough to give that, that a scale, yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I would probably go with an eight since I rarely go on a scale higher than an eight, just <laughs> like. Giving something a perfect score or a nine means there's basically nothing to improve. And I mm -hmm. think it's, there's always room for improvement. So giving an eight is probably the best I can give without making like an evaluation table where I go like this gives point or whatever. So yeah, I would go with eight. And also talking about that uh, stream that introduced the thing. The fun part about it is I came back from holiday on that day. We drove like eight hours or something from France back to Switzerland. And then I streamed at like 1 a.m. in the morning for that. And I was like, yeah, that's great planning. But it was the only day that worked. So I was like, sure, I'll take that chance. If they want Jeez. 
give me that, sure, I'll do it. But I'll be so wasted in that <laughs> next day. <laughs> What cracked me up too about that stream was people like in the stream like calling you out like saying you were bad and stuff. I'm like, he's against Jon Snow. Like, <laughs> do you understand the caliber of players he's against right now? <laughs> but even still, like, I, I I know I remember watching your Kalari game. You got pretty behind at the beginning, but yeah, you really turned it around. And um, once you know, once Kalari gets a little bit fed, she can she can go off. And you really tore you tore him up. You you gave him a good run for it, Sarah Jean. I'll, I'll give you that, man. But yeah, that, that's one thing people I think need to remember when they're watching these community streams and stuff is it's for fun and for showcasing the game, not for the greatest players in the world to be <laughs> showcasing their skills, you know? Also, something to keep in mind is I was probably the best player on my team yes. since <laughs> the others play a lot less or played a lot less of Paragon over Prime than I did. And I'm not I'm not even close to being one of the best players. I'm I don't know. I was somewhere in Plat or something in Paragon, which is not terrible, but also not top. So I think we even won one game if I remember correctly. Yeah, the one you played Kalari, Where... yeah. No, the one I oh. played uh, Scott, I believe. I would need to rewatch him. Yeah, yeah. That was a while that was a while back. Um, what do you think the effects, um, have, have, have you noticed any changes in the feel of Overprime since being acquired by Netmarble? I mean, there's obvious changes, like they did away with their old, um, sort of peer-to-peer, -peer, um, half peer-to-peer, -peer, half server driven, three maps, all that stuff. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is they seem a lot more focused now. Do you enjoy the game more now that they have more focus, or did you enjoy it more when you had multiple maps and modes to play with? I mean, that's a bit hard to say, because I remember when there were no servers, when every game was hosted by a person, and you spent like 15 minutes between games finding a lobby. Or for example, I remember one lobby was always Blood Mordius and some other guys in there, and I ended up always going in those because those were the ones that had empty spots because no one wanted to play against them. <laughs> <laughs> People came in there, Red Black Morius, and were like, nope, I'm out of here again. <laughs> That's one way to get better. <laughs> yeah. It helped me a lot in improving playing against them, getting wrecked <laughs> by them. But yeah, I mean, what they changed makes the game better in the sense that it gives it more people. And just being able to play more instead of wait. Like, I used to call the game a lobby simulator at some point, because <laughs> I would just go into lobby and you had 30 people and one would dodge because they were not happy that they were not in the team with their friend or whatever. And it was like, great, now I'm in lobby for 20, 30 minutes just to get into a game at all. And then I play for 15 minutes because someone gives up or leaves. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I like that we can play the game now, that there's more people playing the game. And they changed a lot of the animations. They made it more, I would say, Asia style, mm -hmm. from which I don't really mind, but was not a necessary change, in my opinion. So, as long as I can have fun, I don't mind if it's the new way of animations or more the old style. Yeah. Um, anything um, else? Yeah, no. So actually, I have a, I have a question for you. So um, <laughs> one of the, the hot topics that I, I saw in the Discord, and I know you're probably <laughs> reading those all the time, um, but is the, you know, divergence between like you know the different player groups like you have um you know either like what you call the old school paragon players who are you know used to you know 30 minute plus games and now over prime where it seems obviously they're trying to go with a more aggressive approach to their game style now obviously we know that they need to tweak things like i don't think their intention is for um you know the prime to be picked up and then the game ends at you know eight or nine minutes i, I think they want it to go a little bit longer than that and i know they're probably going to be adjusting things but um 
from what you've seen, like, you know, in the Discord and, and all that stuff, but also your own opinion, where do you think the, the happy spot for Overprime is as far as, like, you know, the um, game pacing, the uh, the skill, you know, needed to come in, the skills needed at the top? Like, wh where do you personally see, or if you had, like, you know, magic wand to be able to di dictate where it ends up, wh what does that look like from your perspective? So... Game pacing, I'm I'm just going to go with how long a game should take, and I assume they're kind of going to aim for 20, 30 minutes, because mm -hmm. let's be real, if you play competitive and are focused, you won't be focused for an hour or something. You'll start making mistakes after a certain amount of time. And I think half an hour is actually not a bad time to aim at, even if it goes to 40 minutes, that's still okay. But I think 45 minutes or something and concentration will be gone. So you will start making mistakes. And in a 3D MOBA, you can't see behind you. So you need to pay even more attention than with the top-down view mm -hmm. that you have in Dota or LOL, where you can actually see everything. You just see what you have in front. So there's that. And you said the skill ceiling and skill floor, or... Um... Uh, yeah, sure. Those were more examples. I mean, if you want to touch on them, please do. It's more just like, you know, where do you want the game to end up, like, in this, this sphere? Like, again, uh, a lot of times people, you know, end up in one or two camps, it seems like, you know, as the, the old school way of things of, you know, and not that it's bad, but it's like, you know, the slower pace, the, you know, the more grind you know again 30 plus minute games versus what overprime felt like at least in this last cbt which was again 10 to 20 minute type games um i mean again i agree with you on the 20 minutes i i, <laughs> I don't want games going over 30 minutes if i can if i can help it but i also yeah. want there in that you know 20 to 30 minute range there to be you know some impact that we can have and if the game goes longer it's not because the game is making me go longer it's because the two teams are matched well and you know they're matching each other's you know strategic moves and all that stuff and that's fine i don't mind a game going longer because it's just a really good competitive game but um i want you know more games than not to end in around 30 minutes but yeah it was more of just the question is like where do you want the game to be as a whole like do you want it to be a more slow methodical you know strategic game or do you kind of like the faster paced you know rushing from one kill to the next who cares about lane management all that kind of stuff like where, where do you land on that spectrum of uh, of the player base i would say somewhere a bit in the middle I, I you probably don't watch my stream but when you see me stream fault you hear me often say that i'm sleeping while i'm playing on the lane because it's just taking so long for something to happen and, and that's one of the things that I like about Overprime, it's faster. Mm -hmm. And I personally think that's actually a good thing because Fault and Pred, as far as I could tell from the time I played in Pred at least, which is not too much, are similar in speed. Mm -hmm. So Overprime is like a separate, it's not like contesting the people that want to have the slower game because they can go and play Pred or Fault. And the faster people go to, or the people that like faster paced games go to Overprime. It's not that the people are fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I personally like that it's faster. And I hope there will be a competitive scene in Overprime, kind of. I'm too old to participate in that, <laughs> I think. And too bad. But I would still love to just on a casual competitive level to participate in tournaments and stuff because I really enjoy scrims and so I like where you have real matches where you pick hero counter pick and all of that and not just go in the game everyone picks whatever they want and you end up with four, five carries and you're like good team comp let's have fun <laughs> I'm right there with you. Um, I mean, I, I would love for there to be a, you know, really healthy ranked system. Um, not that I think I will do well in it either, but I, I love beating my head against the, the wall that is, you know, improving in in a ranked sphere. Uh, testing yourself against other people in the same skill set is always a, an interesting concept. Do I think I'm, I'm going to be a, a pro player? By no means. Uh, but I can't wait to see what 
pro players look like in this um, and what kind of strategies they come up with. I think that there is an opportunity for, um, you know, an esports scene. Obviously, they need the the base first. I, I think that's something that maybe is, you know, a few years down the road, depending on how quickly it gains that base. But uh, I definitely think it's primed <laughs> to be able to uh, have an esports uh feel to it um we got to see that a little bit in the tournament um what what it could potentially look like um obviously some of a was a, a stomp one way or the other but uh you know they already have like the observation you know modes where you can you know observe. Modes. yeah exactly uh which i think was a cool addition definitely not something that i would have expected in in the cbt um so we were all very happy to be able to kind of do the spectator mode and see what that was like um and that it was even there even if it needs some work i think it needs a lot of work from a spectator's mode but uh yeah what about you mingus what did you, what did you have just, to add just to that? say from somebody who used the spectator <laughs> mode in paragon constantly to make videos yeah it was pretty much exactly the same like oh, okay the, like i that that one also needed improvement but i'm just saying that it's like on par with paragon spectator mode so is that a good thing or a bad thing i mean it's both <laughs> it's both i guess <laughs> maybe good for you because you didn't have to learn a new skill set you just like it's the same thing it's but like for... i had to dust off an, an old skill set that's for damn sure but uh <laughs> that's how i'll participate is i'll i'll announce for these tournaments if i if i get the opportunity to do so but yeah I sure, i'm way too old and bad to be uh participating <laughs> like like you said i well i think um like final question about over prime um sarah jog and i think i already know the answer to this but if you could add one old paragon hero into over prime right now what hero would that be and why <laughs> I mean, I already t uh, told you earlier that I was a crunch main, and crunch's not in there, so <laughs> it's gonna. It would be crunch, and it's simple because I like to punch. I mean, <laughs> what else okay. do you want? No, crunch is just a nice hero because you have all those combination of how you need to use your abilities and need to have in mind. If I use that ability as first then it's not going to be there for the empowered version and so on. And which ability do you want to repeat? Do you want to dash two times? Do you want to stun two times? Do you need more wave clear? So he has four abilities, but still has a lot of variety in it because you have two versions of each, each ability. That was so, going to be my follow-up question, actually, for that. Do you do you hope that they keep the kit the same because that's what's nostalgic and uh, what you remember the most and loved about Crunch? Or are you kind of hoping that they add a little bit of the overprime twist to it to make it feel, you know... I mean, they can adjust the abilities. That's not a problem as long as the base idea of you have basically an empowered version of each ability still is there. I think I'll be happy with it. I mean... Whether he has his um, cleave attack or it's a stomp on the ground or what do I know? <laughs> as long as it's uh, an, an, a normal and an empowered version of it, I think I'll be happy. And I hope they keep the ultimate that it will repeat one of the abilities that you just used. Because that's like, for me, that's an additional skill difficulty that the hero has. You need to know which ability did I last use if I want to use the old? Mm. Uh, which do I want to use twice? Which ability? Do I want to stun twice? Do I want to dash twice? Right. That skill expression. I feel you. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of adjusting abilities and changing abilities, I think that's a nice segue into let's talk about Predecessor now. Let's, uh, let's move on from Overprime. Let's talk about Predecessor. Um, their big news this week uh, so far was a Decker <laughs> skill rework. Now, I will say this right now. We record these on Wednesdays. Um, they sent out a, a tweet today saying that they are going to have a big announcement on Thursday, So, and you're watching this on Friday. So if it's a big <laughs> enough announcement, I'll do its own separate video, but we are not going to be able to cover it tonight, of course, because it's not... We're in the we're in your past right now. We don't know what the announcement is. But uh, they they have already talked about a Decker or skill rework. Or are they rework. our future... Ooh, that's a good question. Mm. Sorry. The present was just now. Um, <laughs> so the Decker skill rework, they moved Containment Fence, no longer an ultimate ability, 
It is now a standard ability. We don't know anything about the cooldown, mana cost, um, the height, the circumference. We don't know how they're going to balance that, but Containment Fence is now a basic ability, and they're going to give her a new ultimate ability. They also removed her slow bubble, um, and that has been replaced with, we saw the, 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 the laser kind of moving across the map. That's what her E is going to be now. It's no longer the slow bubble. And her rocket boots? Also no longer there. That has been moved to a passive, and you can just activate it with your space bar whenever it's off of cooldown. So it's just like any other jump. Um, so some pretty heavy skill reworks come into Decker, and um, Nabori did tell me in Discord that he will be doing a Decker video soon. Um, I don't know if that's going to be like I don't know how in depth that will be, but it should explain. Maybe that's going to be the big announcement that they have tomorrow. It should explain. Like, because we don't know what that ultimate's going to be or anything. Um, what do you guys think? Um, Sir, Sir Jog, what do you think about this Decker skill rework? Uh, specifically, what do you think about Containment Fence being a basic ability now? I mean, the Containment Fence was always a bit a weird ability, in my opinion, because ability in itself is pretty useless. Because it makes this fence, but it doesn't do actively something. It just restrains the enemies to, for your team to do something with it, but it doesn't do something by itself. So putting it as an ultimate, their argumentation was, I think, something around there that you your team needs to follow up and you need to rely on your team to do something with that fence. So I think it's not a bad idea to remove it from an ultimate, but... It feels like if they balance it out, so how did I put that? It's pretty much the same as the slow bubble for me, just that it gives a fixed limit instead of slowing you inside the bubble, it fixes you inside the bubble, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Unless they make it as huge as it is now, and then it's a bit weird to have that as a basic ability. So... I assume they're going to make the range of it very small compared to now or compared to what we know back from Paragon. And then it's just an extreme slow where you can still run around it. But I don't see that much of a difference to the slow as a such. So I think it's nice that they give a new ult to Decker. But since we don't know anything about that ult, it's a bit hard to say something on if that's a good or a bad ultimate. That's an interesting way of looking at it, that the, the fence just straight is a, just a straight replacement for the slow bubble, even though the slow bubble was replaced for something else. But it kind of serves the same function of limiting movement in a, in a, in a particular area, um, especially depending on the duration of how long that fence is going to stay up. Um, Jenna, what did you think about this re Decker skill rework? I mean, it's it's interesting for sure. Uh, I, I mean, and they, I, I like the the detail in which they go into the depth about it. Um, I, it it does seem like that they're they're really leaning into the disruptor, you know, idea. Uh, and and you know, I know that there's um, Richter is also considered a disruptor in that same field so um i, I definitely think that the this idea and space of having like this mage style disruptor is cool um and i'm assuming she's probably still going to be mostly played as a as a support for for that exact reason but i guess you could maybe see with some of these changes them in a in a solo lane but um the the fence that's one that's the biggest question marks right because what is it going to be the same fence just now it's not an ultimate like is, is it going to do the same things are they going to make it smaller are they going to make it bigger is it going to just cause like a slow is it, it what is it but it seems like the idea at least from reading the descriptions is that they kind of want that when you use her full kit her whole combo is that you are like either singling out one person or creating a team fight situation to where you are able to focus and just do like you won't do the damage like as as Decker it seems like they're removing the idea of doing damage from her and more about just creating opportunities for your team to pile on and and do a lot of damage and that's sounds interesting it doesn't sound like necessarily a lot of fun to play unless you're playing with like a, a, a you know a team or something like that because 
Otherwise, you're just a stun bot, which is not usually a lot of fun. But if they find a way to make it fun, then cool, right? It, it, getting kills is always a good thing. But um, yeah, the Ion Strike, I, I want to know what that is. Is it that? Is it that thing that we saw? I'm assuming it is. But what does it do? Like, does it slow everybody that gets hit by it? Does it? it does it like pull people in? I don't know, man. It will because, like <laughs> I said, it sounds like they want to have everything. Like, because, like, literally it says Decker's rework ensures all her tools are focused on locking down enemies long enough for her team to kill them at the expense of her reliable damage output and general tankiness. So, like, I don't know. It, it sounds interesting. I want to see it in practice. So I, I really hope that the uh, announcement uh, tomorrow is exactly that, going more into detail about what this stuff looks like. Hopefully, like, an actual visual seeing of it in in practice um yeah. i think that'll give the the predecessor you know stands something to get really excited about and continue to you know edge everybody till the next play test uh but no it looks cool i also think her new um the in, removing slow bubble and the photon disruptor also sounds cool i think that that that, that ability as a whole seems like it could be fun more of like a skill shot thing rather than that I don't know. It looked weird. That slow bubble down. to me was just always an accidental way to steal a kill from your carry. Yeah, I, and maybe this will be the same thing, just <laughs> easier to do. <laughs> yeah, yes, accidental. Accidental. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Like the big announcement's probably I'm, it's probably going to be your kit and make us all look like complete assholes for all this speculation <laughs> the next day. But, uh, I don't know. I have full I have full confidence in Omega's balance team. I'm sure whatever you know, moving the containment fence to a basic ability. It may seem weird to move like an ultimate to a basic ability, but I'm sure they'll find a way to make it work, and I have full confidence in that. And I, I can't, can't wait to play her. I, Decker was one of my, I think she was my very first mastery in Paragon. So, love me some Decker. Can't wait to play her in Predecessor. I've had a, I've had a great time with Predecessor. But, um, well, quick question with that, Mangus, since obviously Decker's one of your your old school mains. Do Do you feel like based off this description they're still capturing what you visualize decker to be as a as a champion or as a hero like, she still you, has ion bomb she still has stun bomb she, stasis bomb so mm, as long yeah. as decker has stasis bomb she's decker baby <laughs> <laughs> as long as i could throw that sucker through a fog wall at a moving target bounce it and then land it directly in their face i'll be happy Fair as enough. long as i can I, bank I, it off the uh the pillar over there and then hit somebody in the head with it i'll be happy yeah, I, I just always was curious about that because, like, you know, when when you people like make their mains and they have like their, that's their you know one they, and they they can't envision it almost being anything other than the way that they've played it before. And so, uh, and when 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 type stuff like this, like whether it's this game or Overprime or uh, Fault or whatever, when they make changes to you know the way that the whole you know champion <laughs> plays, I'm always curious how. You know, the people who really loved that character now feel like, does it still feel like that character? I mean, on this one, it's, you know, guessing, right? Because you haven't played her yet. But um, on paper, to me, now granted, this is outside looking in. I'm not by any means a Decker main, although I did play her a decent amount. Not not crazy amount, but enough to at least have a, 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 a rough familiarity. It seems like they, they're still capturing the core of, of what she was kind of supposed to be in the game anyway. You know, not a full-on stun bot, but kind of a stun bot uh, while uh, also... You know, skill expressions there. As they said, a disruption support. She doesn't heal, yeah. but she offers plenty of other... She doesn't heal or shield, but she offers plenty of other ways to, to pull your carry out of hot water and to set up kills. So, um, Any any final thoughts on Predecessor before we move, before we move along? Play, test, win? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. I hope that's the announcement. I'm, I, I, I'm going to be wrong, but I hope that's the announcement is play test coming on Saturday. Yeah. But that's that's my that's my hope. We can always hope. Uh, yeah. dude. Well, if you guys got nothing else for predecessor, let's move on into Fault. Uh Fault had a new patch uh actually released about a couple weeks ago, but we didn't do a show last week patch 16.4. Um not a huge patch, not like a game changing patch or anything. A lot of bug fixes, um Lot, some sound effects fixes and a, a a little bit of balance stuff. I think the biggest changes was they made some huge changes to Countess, um, like their version of Countess. They they removed and added a lot of different things to make 
Countess a little less of give her a little less of a burst heal and more of a sustained heal and um I don't know. They've been flopping around with Countess for a while now. <laughs> um and they also uh they they nerfed old Feng Miao a little bit more. They've been steadily just turning that knob, turning Feng Miao down since they introduced him in such a just busted, overpowered, insane state. So th- that's what 16.4 is all about. Um, uh, Sarah Jog, I know you do play some Fault. Um, uh, probably a bit more than, uh, than, than than Jedi. I know, Jedi, you did play a bit today, but... Um, I did. Uh, Sarah Jog, what... Is, was there anything about these th- this this patch that stood out to you, or is there anything you would like to just say about fault in general? I mean, it's good that they are nerfing Fang because every time I see a Fang, it's pretty much like, well, we need one as well still because <laughs> he's still strong. He's not as overpowered as he used to, but he's definitely still strong. But except for that, I mean. Games getting better, in my opinion. It would just need a bigger community. That's the main issue in the game, in my opinion, that it doesn't really have a community, and the people that play it are either tryhards or toxic. Mm. I think, <laughs> Which I think doesn't has- help new people to get into it either. Yeah. I think it's slower, more strategic gameplay has its place. Um, but like you said, they're just they don't have the player, but they poisoned the well at the very beginning and they've been trying their absolute damnedest to recover from that for a while now. Um, so Viking Jedi, you just played, did you play PVE or PVP in fault today? Um, so I queued for PVP just to see, um, but it was taking a little bit. And so I was just like, you know, I'm over it. I, I, you know, based on your suggestion, uh, you said that I should just, you know, jump into a PVE match and, uh, mess around with stuff. So, uh, I jumped out of queue and jumped into just to, did, uh, a PVE match. Well, what do you think uh, after having not played fault in a while? So I'm sure a lot yeah, of those changes I, were pretty massive for you. Oh man, it was, uh, it was, it was a lot to take in. Um, you know, they have like a, so I, again, I don't know when last time you guys logged in, but like, um, or they had like a video that played right when you booted up asking you what your level of play was. That wasn't there when last I played. I think it's been, by the way, like I think a year and a half or so since I played last, I think. <laughs> so um, it was a lot of new changes for me. <clears throat> but um, that was pretty neat. Um, the video w- w- played well overall and it did try to explain, you know, some of the concepts that are in the game. And um, I-, I think from that perspective, it was, you know, it's not quite to the level that I've, you know, been asking games like this to, you know, provide as far as a tutorial, um, but at least it was something. Um, it does give a- an introduction you know, for new players or for returning players like myself or whatever of what you should be doing in the game. Um, but the the map had some lighting issues. Um, so I started off, because um, my, my rig can run it, I tried running everything on Ultimate uh, or whatever the highest setting is, just to see. It's like, okay, so if this game is running full-blown graphics, like, you know, how, how, what does it look like? And the lighting is just atrocious. It's it's broken up um, as you're running. So I was going to the carry lane. So as you're running to the lane, the wall will have slits of like beams of light coming through it that are like very angular and not natural looking at all. Like, you know, like uh, it just so the, I was like, OK, that's one thing. So I get to lane and I start trying to like last hit. And by the way, like I have no frames issues. I'm at like 160 plus frames on on Epic everything. Um, but trying to still like last hit, it was weird and all that. So, so I had to, by nature, adjust the settings down in order to make it feel more accurate to the server. Um, even though visually, um, I, I can support it. It just wasn't, I think, speaking to the server accurately. I don't know how to explain it in any other way. Um, so that was a bit discomforting. I, I was a, a bit bummed out by that. Also, it has like like a bl- weird blurriness to it. And so I had to mess with like the um, anti-aliasing and post-processing a lot to, to finally get it to where it doesn't look like that. And so I, I do this in a lot of games, almost every PC game, you're probably going to need to jump into the settings and fine tune stuff. So it's not like the end of the world, but it was a bit of a bummer that, you know, running on all Epic doesn't just seem really, really great. Like the game should be the best at, in that version. And I, I just don't think it is. It, it's better lowering some of the settings to <laughs> to make it a little bit uh clearer and, and more precise but um 
Yeah, uh, the, oh, so something that was different was uh, the items. Item s system, I love the newbie system for it. Like, you can obviously jump in and, you know, pick the items that you want, but it has, um, you know, use alt, you know, one, two, three, or whatever, and it'll tell you what items you should be buying. Uh, I really like that. I thought that was very, very clever, especially, again, for new players that are, would be coming into it that you don't, you can kind of learn how your character should be buying items based off of that. Um, and so I, I liked that a lot. Um, that was, that was really, really interesting. Um, but everything else was just almost exactly how I remember it. Like, you know, feels slow. Last hitting is a super chore. It's so hard to, 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 to figure out. Like, so I, I played a lot of league of legends and so you get, you know, good in league being able to see, um, you need to focus on, uh, your range minions and who they're focusing because they're going to kill whatever it is really fast because they do the most damage in fault and actually in most all of these games with the minions it's it's really difficult to sometimes figure out who's targeting what and how much damage is coming across um, with over prime you have an execute mechanic so it's a lot easier just to know that you're gonna because the bar changes color you press the button it kills the minion it is what it is and this it doesn't have that so you still have to try like in a lot of other mobas to last hit accordingly so now granted it's been a while since i farmed on this game but it was uh, i immediately missed how over prime has it at least from that perspective because i was trying to watch my minions and how they're focusing just like i would in league of legends and still it was inconsistent and hard to figure out and um yeah so i was, I was a bit bummed on that that front um the predecessor has a similar last hit sort of thing it's not mm -hmm. it's not a true execute but oh good I, I think that's just i think that's just smart yeah kill it. I, I personally at this point i mean i know a lot of people, you and Jelly, and and uh, I'd love to get uh, you know Sarog's opinion too. But I know that a lot of people think that last hitting is a skill that should be in MOBAs. And while I, I for the most part, agree, um, I think if it's ranked or competitive, maybe that's more accurate. But for like your casual gameplay, I think it's better for people to get the experience in gold and enjoy playing the game more than it is to have that as a skill expression, especially in the 3D MOBA, where it's really, really difficult again to get all the information you need to know when to last hit efficiently. Um, is it a skill that you can develop? Of course it is. Absolutely. Do you want your brand new players being forced to have to learn that skill? Maybe not. I don't know. It's again up to the, the developers to decide, but um if this was free to play game, I'd probably play it more often. And not because, because uh, I already own it, I could play it right now. But I think the the fact that it's not free to play and it's still in kind of a janky state puts me off. And I think that's probably why the player base continues to be what it is. So the people who own the game don't really want to play it anyway, but they can't get new people to play it because there's a barrier of entry for, for cost. And you look on the Steam reviews and all that stuff and it's just, you know, negative reviews like crazy and you know, or mixed reviews depending on the day that you look at it and so um it makes sense why there's maybe two three hundred people playing it every day and yeah uh from what i've gathered i didn't get a chance to play it today but i'll, I'll probably play it try and play it some more so i have a better opinion going forward but um the toxicity in a lot of these games and mobas in general is usually pretty bad but i know for fault because it's really just the the sweatiest of the sweaty players left playing that game and they all know each other you, they, they, and they, if you're new they immediately know you're new because you're not one of the other people that's playing all the time and uh, yeah from what I've been able to gather is it just it's hard to get your friends to want to play consistently because the toxicity in the in the game is just bad and um i know the fault stands might come after me for that one uh, sorry guys uh i know there's a few of you out there that watch this show and i, I don't think that the problem with fault is that it's it, it had the chance it's had two years in my opinion to really do something and and even though they had a rough patch to start the stuff that they've added and changed uh, weren't enough to overcome it unfortunately um even though the effort has been there and i know that the devs like you've had a lot of conversations with them um i've had a few interactions with the devs they all seem like really really nice people like and, and they, like, they give a shit about their game like that's one thing i do feel like with fault and it's it's unfortunate because i think they actually want their game to be good they want to try to do it that's just i don't know what it is the whether it's money or or what i, I don't know what it is that they for some reason they just can't seem to get the hype back into 
fault and, and fix some of those things that will make it a playable game for the vast majority of people who want to play this style of game. Um, uh, sorry, I know I'm monologuing a lot here, so I apologize. <laughs> I just, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so what, what do you guys think? Uh, well, I mean, they've improved so, so, so much. Yeah. They still get shit on a lot, and I think unfairly. And you were talking about the reviews in Steam. Look at the reviews. Um, you'll notice some of the there'll be a paragraph explaining what this person absolutely hates about fault. They'll have 0.5 hours played. It'll be somebody that got the game just so that they could drop a bad review for fault (laughs) or like, right. But, um, I mean, but you are right. Like I, like I've said it over and over again, strange matter is faults biggest hurdle. Like they constantly they, they will have that game fixed in such a great state introduce one more thing and break everything mm-hmm. and they they're constantly taking two steps forward and one step back but it, that's better than what it used to be it used to be they would take one step forward and two steps back but at least they're uh, <laughs> at least they're gaining ground now um and they, they I mean they have been a live service game for a very long time and have constantly made improvements and have constantly um they they, they do listen to community feedback and change things even if it may be slow, like Fing, Fing Mao. Everybody complained about Fing Mao being way, way overpowered. It's taking them quite a while to try and wrangle him in. But they do care, and they do, like you said, they do care, and they do make um, a lot of changes. And uh, I think one of the things, the, the, what they're kind of stake, staking, what they say that they're going to have a reveal dev stream on the 13th. And um, as we all know, that movie that's going to have fault in it not a fault movie, a movie that will have fault gameplay featured in it. Um, that's going to be streaming on the 15th. That's when that movie premieres on Amazon Prime. So, I mean, I think it's a pretty fair assessment to say that this reveal stream on the 13th is going to be like their all or nothing go at it. You know what I mean? Like, this maybe this movie is the, the thing that they were waiting on so they could finally because they don't really do a lot of marketing for fault or anything. Um, even though they've improved the game quite a bit, they really haven't tried to push it to the community as much right. as you would think they would. Uh, right. Maybe this is what that's going to be. And if they can get a bigger player base, as um, both Serjog and yourself have said, if they can get a bigger player base, I think a lot more people would find a lot more enjoyment in the game because it, it is very hard to play against the, 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 the fault veterans that have been playing it since day one when you're a, when you're a newcomer and unfortunately you get mashed up against those people as a newcomer because there just aren't a lot of people playing fault. I will also say, I know I monologued a lot there, but um, the AI combat was really good for, for new players. I, I, at least I would think so. Um, it, they did. I, it's a lot of times when you play against AI, they just act stupid or they're either overly aggressive or not aggressive at all. I felt like, I mean, I just went into the carry lane. I thought that they, they, they played decent they're not like again we're not talking about really high level gameplay here but um the you know the carry didn't just let me poke them to death like if i stepped up within range and you know it made sense for them to attack me they would and their support would support that attack and vice versa and so um like my support i would was there was a muriel bot it was very much i went in and i got shielded and all kinds of stuff. i was like whoa okay here we go so yeah. that part actually felt good um you know i do wish some of the visuals uh i was playing his twin blast his right click still looks like shit to me i you, you, you get like this like bluish like aura kind of around you that that's telling you and then you get like a notification in the in the corner or something like that that you're you, the buff is on i wish there was something a little bit more other than you know because he doesn't even always say the the voice line that he does you know or whatever when you it sounds like it, it i forget what it is it's either bang bang or well they recently whatever it is. cut back on the voice lines too like oh was, okay so yeah, yeah i don't know i just wish was... that they were using the voice lines too much <laughs> and maybe they were i don't know i just i kind of wish that that one had a, a little bit more visual clarity that like, ultimate hey, needs to be a, a bit more transformative as well yeah, the ultimate also didn't feel as good. Uh, and again, this is just one play, guys. I know I, I'm not diving super deep into all of the cool things they've improved on in Fault, and I'm sorry if, I, if I'm doing the game a, a disservice. But at least I tried it again after a year and a half of not touching the game, so you guys can get off my back. 
It is downloaded on my computer. I didn't immediately like uninstall it after doing the one I'm, game. I'm gonna get you guys into some games. I'm gonna get you guys. I want to play. Yeah. Games. I mean, uh, I own I, it. I actually Let's enjoy play. Fault. Like I, I do enjoy Fault. Just I don't play it all the time. Um, Sarah Jock, do you have any final thoughts on Fault before we uh we start closing things out here today? I mean, I would pick up a few things that were said first. The item suggestions don't go based on the hero. Basically, they go based on the role. Oh, actually, okay, so I didn't know that. I, I'm I not sure if it's depending on your hero and role, but I know that we were like five stacking or something and we picked role and then we switched it up and picked the heroes. And I was like, I had jungle role and ended up playing ADC and it suggested me to go jungle items. And I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And the last hitting, um, in the settings, you can say which server you prefer, and then mm -hmm. you might end up on that server or on another one. And I don't know what it was today, but I actually was better at last hitting with 140 ping than with 60 ping. Oh, Somehow. Yeah. It I felt more NA natural server. with 140. Huh. I'll yeah, well, I put on there. EU, but I ended up on NA and had 140 <laughs> ping, and I was in the match and was like, oh, I made a C and 140 ping. That's going to be funsies. <laughs> well, their netcode is actually pretty good. Like when you play, when I play on EU servers, there's not that big of a difference, um, comparatively speaking to like um, predecessor and overprime. Like overprime predecessor, if you play on a different server other than the one your native server, it's it's a pretty stark difference. Whereas in Fault, it's not eh, it's not as bad. They got pretty good netcode over there. Strange matter. Only for uh, ranged heroes that I mind the 140 ping instead of the 60. <laughs> <laughs> There's F eighty difference. You feel it when last hitting usually. Yeah, but Listen, yeah. I'm, so I'm fully, I'm fully accepting that I was the reason why I couldn't last hit on some minions. Okay, but I'm sure there's something <laughs> in there about the game also preventing me from doing it as good. It's not just that I'm a bad player. Okay. Uh, they have the same no. Health but uh, what I was saying is that yeah. today somehow I was better with 140 ping than with 80 uh, with 60 <laughs> ping. It felt more natural with the 140 <laughs> ping somehow. So, there is something janky about last hitting sometimes, apparently. Otherwise, it wouldn't feel better on 140 than on 60. Thank you for making me feel better about my bad play. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I will say, false health bars are a bit janky. It's, it always seems everything you kill, it seems it's at, like, maybe one health, but it still has... It can still take two or, two or three more hits to kill it. Especially nice. heroes and, like, um, the, the larger buffs. Some know. of the events the that would go off too are weird. Bar. Yeah. Oh, the health bar. Yeah, those are. Weird. The, yeah. I, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that I think they could still improve on. But like the there was a thing that kept happening in an event. I'm assuming it was one some random creature. I wasn't paying that close attention, but someone in the comments can tell me or one of you guys can. But like some event kept going off. Like it would be make this big noise. Probably no after. pop up or anything of what it was. I, so I would just be like, well, something's happening in. <laughs> over there it's not in my lane i'm just gonna keep going in there and trying to last hit so uh that was something that was interesting so maybe i'm dumb and i just missed whatever it was as a pop-up but it definitely wasn't immediately obvious to me whatever was being killed or spawned i don't know it was yeah. it was weird yeah that's, that's all, all I have. that's another thing with fault is it takes a lot more knowledge to play it, there's a higher barrier of entry for fault than any of the other ones as far as, as far as knowledge goes but um, that could be a good or a bad thing. But Anyway, that's uh, we're going to start closing this episode out. We've been going for quite a while here. Um, My bad. Yeah, it is your bad, <laughs> Jedi. <laughs> it's, always, it's always me. It's funny because we did the beta mails, and they did, this, they did the episode and because I wasn't feeling well. So they did the episode without me, and it was done in like 45 minutes. <laughs> Normally, <laughs> any video 37. I seem to be in. Uh, 37? Yeah. Okay. Any video I seem to be in goes at least an hour, if not an hour and a half. So uh, that's either good or bad thing, depending, I guess, on who you ask. But uh, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, for for ethereal, um, we don't have anything this week. We'll ha we will have some stuff next week. Uh, we do want Jelly to be on the show for when we talk, we discuss the ethereal topics. But um, yeah, Sergeog, anything you want to say to the community before we start signing off? Not really. Thanks a lot for having me here, and feel free to tune in. Once in a while. I will have his Twitch linked in the uh, comments below. Do you have a YouTube, Sarah Jean? Yeah. 
but I don't really do much on it. Okay, I'll have but a special link to that. <laughs> <laughs> I Maybe uploaded can... some videos from Over Prime to it, but that's about all okay. that on it. <laughs> Maybe uh, for, for those of us who don't catch live streams anymore, uh, you upload your VODs from your live streams on there. Just one-to-one -one it from Twitch to, to YouTube, so that way we can watch your VODs. Because Twitch VODs are garbage. YouTube VODs are better. <laughs> just a, just an idea. <laughs> you got any final thoughts, Jedi? I have none, man. Uh, no, it, it's it's been a, an interesting week for for the, all the updates. I can't wait to see what this predecessor update is going to be tomorrow. Um, but oh, I'll say this because I've been plugging it like crazy, guys. We need you. He doesn't do it, but I will do it. You need to say hi in the comments. Please hit the thumbs up for the videos because it does help the algorithm a lot. Um, you know, we're not necessarily looking to to become, you know, millionaire YouTubers or anything like that. But, uh, you know, getting the community more involved and getting access to more people, I think, would be really cool. So uh, if you have the time, please comment below. Please give it a thumbs up. Tune in to the premiere. All that fun stuff. Uh, so hit the subscribe button. <laughs> well, I appreciate that because... I even think that liking my own videos is pretentious. I don't like my own videos. Oh, but... I do. <laughs> I, re I retweet my own tweets, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, appreciate that, Jedi. But uh, that is going to wrap it up for this week. I uh, thank everybody for coming out. Thank you, especially Sarah Jog, for making an appearance on the show. It was really nice to talk to you and uh, learn a little bit more about Overprime and your experiences with Overprime. But uh, that is going to be the For the Minions crew signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoos! Special shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt Raven, and Blastoise King. <laughs>